We're down south of the river, New Cross Gate. New Cross Gate, just the other end of New Cross. Under its original name of Hatcham, New Cross dates back to the Doomsday Book and most likely deeper into the past. So New Cross is obviously famous for being the home of Goldsmiths College, University of London, which is the birthplace of, of Brit art. Make of that of achievement what you will. It's a very significant cultural moment, isn't it, Brit art? It's also actually the only place I've ever lived in South London. And we're gonna walk past that house in a minute as we ascend Telegraph Hill. And my hat, look at, look at that, look. My bean, oh. Still getting used to beanie season. Got an absolutely cracking walk for you today. I know it's a cracking walk because I took a group of people out on this walk yesterday or at the end of the walk when we go through Nunhead Cemetery. We're going to go around Nunhead Cemetery, one of the magnificent seven cemeteries. But we're going to start off down here in New Cross Gate and go up, go up Telegraph Hill. Embarrassingly, I will tell you more about this later, but I've never been to the top of Telegraph Hill, even though I used to live at the bottom of Telegraph Hill for six months. And behind us, me here, is a very important location that I was fascinated by when I lived in Peeps Road, where we're going to go in a minute. The bus garage, massive bus garage here. I used to watch the buses coming in and out and make records of the numbers. I know. I mean, I didn't keep really diligent records of the bus numbers. I just sort of was slightly fascinated by uh, all the routes that the buses were taking, all the journeys that began and end at this little place here in New Cross Gate. I was sort of fascinated by it. Also, I suppose that was in the era when I may have woken up drunk on a bus at the, uh, at the end of its terminus. So I sort of thought about all the sort of like, <laughs> all people's nights that end up here, collapse at the back of a night bus. At some point, Hatcham changed its name to New Cross, and that was purely because of um, the name of an inn here that, that I think was a coaching inn on the road between London and Kent, and then people would go across to France. And New Cross Gate, it simply uh, takes its name from the toll gate that was here on this road. It was a toll road in the 18th century. And this is the street where I lived, Peeps Road, and it's also the bottom of Telegraph Hill, one of, the, one of the highest points in this part of South London. So I lived in that house over there with the blue door. Uh, we lived at the top, the top flat, me and my mate. And it was when I was working in the West End in a theatre, and I was also working during the day as well, so I didn't really spend much time here, to be honest with you. And consequently, I don't remember ever walking to the top of this road, of Peeps Road, to Telegraph Hill. It's, uh, it's interesting, isn't it, how we form our impression of a city and how we get to know a place. Um, because it was only yesterday when I was, I was going to meet a group of people I was taking for a walk around Nunhead Cemetery, I walked past the end of Peeps Road and I just thought, oh, it's strange, there's a lot of references to Samuel Pepys in South London. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what the association is. I guess he must have lived in South London, I suppose. And I was just thinking like that, and thinking, isn't it strange? Because I lived in Peeps Road, uh, not that far away from here. And then when I looked at the map, trying to work out the, a route for this walk today to extend it from the cemetery, I was like, hang on a moment, Telegraph Hill looks good. Peeps Road again. Oh my God, that's the Peeps Road where I lived. And I don't know. <laughs> I don't think I was terribly interested in walking over the top of the hill. I was interested in Peckham Rye, but not enough to make me do it one day. The gravitational pull was the other way. And for me at that point, it was the West End. So this is going to be my first time walking to the top of Telegraph Hill. I, however, I should know, I lived in this street uh, 27 years ago, so it's a long time ago, that. Before this land was developed, it was, uh, it was pasture land, open pasture land. And the original name of Telegraph Hill was Ploughed Garlic Hill. It's interesting, isn't it? The land was, uh, the land was owned by the worshipful company of haberdashers. And it was they who started to develop it, it uh, towards the end of the 19th century. Some of these houses would be from that period of time, from the 1870s onwards. Mm. 
And then the name change to Telegraph Hill, quite obviously, <laughs> is a reaction to the building of a telegraph station at the top of this hill here in the 1790s. And it was one of the stations that was used to relay the news of Wellington's victory at Waterloo back to central London. Very important spot. But it's interesting the telegraph pole wasn't actually there for very long. I think it went up in 1795 and I think it was taken down in the 1820s. So although it had another name, a ploughed garlic hill, for much, 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 much longer, um, as soon as they changed the name to Telegraph Hill, it just stuck, even though there was no telegraph pole there. But there's a park up here, or a couple of parks actually, which uh, apparently give fantastic views across London. And it really highlights the topography of this part of South London. Um, I think this is kind of a, a spur, if you like, of the Norwood Ridge, a ridge of high land that runs from One Tree Hill down to Crystal Palace and I walked along that ridge um, about three and a half years ago. I'll link to that video below and it's really spectacular. I think the views from this ridge here in South London are the, are the best views in London I think as a consistent chain of views. I mean naturally you've got fantastic views around Hampstead and Highgate but, but consistently all through here as you work your way south the views are spectacular. Yeah, here, one, uh, Telegraph Hill, One Tree Hill, where we've been in the previous video, Blythe Hill, the Seven Hills of Dulwich. It's great, so the entrance to the park is just over here. So it's interesting, these aren't the original iron railings around the park. Those were mostly removed during the Second World War for the war effort. As somebody commented on a video in the past that actually a lot of those that iron wasn't actually used for the war effort and the railings were just dumped. And this park here, the Lower Park, opened in 1895. And it originally had a bandstand and a lake. The bandstand was removed, I think, during the war and the lake was filled in. But the landscaping otherwise remains. And we've got the really beautiful autumn colours. Won't be with us for much longer. These leaves will be all on the ground pretty soon. And here's a statue of uh, Oluwuda Equiano, who lived an absolutely incredible life. He was uh, sold into slavery or captured as a slave as a child, sold multiple times but eventually bought his freedom in, in London and joined London society and became part of a group of uh, African intellectuals called the Sons of Africa, who petitioned for the abolition of slavery. And he wrote an autobiography, which became a massive, uh, sort of massive influential book during his lifetime and is still in print. This little interpretation board here tells us that the, uh, this garden here and the statue was installed in 2007 to commemorate the 200th anniversary of the abolition of the slave trade in the British Empire. And it was a collaboration between the friends of, the, of Telegraph Hill Park and a local school, the Edmund Wallace School. Cool. So the tennis court here marks the site of the semaphore station that was built in 1795 here that linked the Admiralty in Whitehall to the Navy in Deal. And there's some information here. And it says they chose this location of the open farmland around. So it was an ideal site for an optical telegraph link at that time. 50 meters above sea level. So what's that, about 150 feet, 170 feet. And it says here, it said that news of the victory at the Battle of Waterloo in 1815 was conveyed through from Dover via the semaphore stations. Isn't that amazing? And here's a drawing of said semaphore station. And here's a map showing the semaphore route between London and Deal, passing through Telegraph Hill, then Shooters Hill, and out to Swanscombe, and down through Kent. And it really does have fantastic views. 
out across London, doesn't it? So now we better crack on and get to Nunhead Cemetery, one of the magnificent seven London cemeteries. And a real beauty it is as well. That's an interesting looking pub, isn't it? Doesn't seem to have a sign at the side saying what its name is, but that looks fascinating. At first I thought it was somebody's house. But um, that looks like a, a good place for a winter's eve. I'll be honest with you. Before I came down to Nunhead Cemetery in the summer, I'd never been to Nunhead before. It had always been on my list of places to go to. In fact, it was on one of the itineraries I drew up for my book, This Other London, when I was working that out in 2011, 2012. But I never came down here until I was commissioned to create a walk that took in Nunhead Cemetery. Uh, and it's really fascinating. And I sort of made me think about why this area of London is, well, it's not overlooked by the people that live here, is it? <laughs> As you say, it's only overlooked by people that live north of the river. Um, but you wouldn't, it's really lovely around here, actually. We've got broccoli, Nunhead, Telegraph Hill. It's great. You can see there's some really decent looking pubs, but I can't imagine many people that live in, that live in uh, Camden and Islington nip down to Nunhead for a pint. Whereas people do go out to Camden and Islington, etc., from all over London. But there's no real reason not to. It's great. So we cut through here to Nunhead Station and then up to Nunhead Cemetery. Fantastic. There's a fantastic garden centre here just opposite the station, the Nunhead Gardener. It looks so enticing, but I'm always on my way somewhere and I can never get anything here. One day I'll come back just to visit the Nunhead Gardener. And once again, we're, we're ascending the foothills of the Norwood Ridge here. You can feel yourself climbing uphill and there are more incredible views from Nunhead Cemetery, hopefully. The name Nunhead is a very intriguing and curious one, isn't it? And it's first recorded, or the first record that's been found, I should say, is from a deed, I think from 1583, that mentions land lying at the Nun Head. I think the, um, the assumption there is that it's the, the name of the tavern. There is still actually an old Nun's Head Tavern now. So there was a Nun's Head Tavern. Where the tavern got its name from, though, is less clear. And there's a local legend that says that it comes from the time of the dissolution of the monasteries when there was a, a nunnery down here at Nunhead, roughly where the old Nun's Head Tavern is today, and that the mother superior of that nunnery was beheaded and her head was placed upon a spike on Nunhead Green. Quite a gruesome story, eh? And I don't think there's any evidence for that story. <laughs> But it'll do, right? In the absence of anything else, we'll take it. These majestic Portland stone gateposts announce that you have arrived at Nunhead Cemetery. And these torches here are placed upside down. Upside down torches to symbolise the extinguishing of life. They were quite dark and macabre, weren't they, the Victorians? So Nunhead Cemetery opened in 1840 as one of uh, what became known as the Magnificent Seven London Cemeteries. And these were cemeteries, Victorian cemeteries built as a response to the uh, overcrowding of parish churchyards. By 1830, the population of London had grown to such an extent there was no room for burials anymore in the traditional burial places by the parish churches. So they had to take urgent action and there was an act of parliament that resulted in the building initially of Kensal Green Cemetery, which was started in 1830. I think it might have opened in 1831. And then that was followed next by the building of Highgate Cemetery in 1839, where we were a couple of months ago, I think. 
and then none had opened a year later in 1840. And the positioning of Nunhead and Highgate was that they were built facing each other north-south on opposing slopes of the London Basin with St Paul's Cathedral in between the two. And apparently you should be able to see from Nunhead to Highgate Cemetery and from Highgate Cemetery to Nunhead. And there is a viewpoint towards St Paul's Cathedral. So let's see if we can see, uh, well initially St Paul's and then make out the dot that is Highgate on the opposite hill. Now here's the majestic Grade 2 listed Anglican Chapel, which was sadly gutted by fire in the 1970s, believed to be arson. There was a fellow, a uh, very interesting fellow, who came on the walk with us yesterday. Martin is a local chap, and he said in the 70s, when, the, when this churchyard was overgrown and abandoned and locked up, is that various kind of cults and satanic groups would perform rituals in that church there and light fires. So it may well have been accidental. And Martin also said that amongst the gargoyles carved in to the tower here, there are green men, which are pagan symbols, the green man, the symbol of the forest. You notice a lot of um, Egyptian symbolism in these Victorian churchyards. Here we have an obelisk, and there are lots of obelisks. You can see another one, at least, to my left. And apparently that, was, that reflects the... Uh, a fascination with ancient Egypt in the Victorian era uh, to the extent that it's been termed Egyptomania and of course I think what they were trying to do is link the British Empire to the great civilizations of the past and they saw the Egyptians of having built these great monuments that survived thousands of years and I think they were trying to imitate that. That looks like one of the weeping angels from Doctor Who doesn't it? Voted, I think, is one of the most terrifying episodes of Doctor Who. I mean, maybe it is one of the Weeping Angels. The first burial was a fellow called Charles Abbott, who was an incredible 101 when he died in 1840. This isn't his uh, grave here, this is just a random one actually that I've happened to be stood by. Of course, the great feature of this cemetery, like many of the other Magnificent Seven, is actually the trees, not the tombstones, not the stonework, but actually the trees, the planting, which was actually very deliberate. It was part of the garden cemetery movement. I think partly started by Pierre Lachey Cemetery in Paris. So we find ourselves climbing another hill, Nunhead Hill. And the cemetery was built around this hill here, which kind of dominated the farmland. I think it was mostly grazing land. And this hill rises 200 feet. So I think it's slightly higher than Telegraph Hill. And it's, like I say, it's part of that chain of hills that stretches across South London out to the, uh, out to the North Downs. Apparently you can see the North Downs, although I haven't done on my previous visits. But. And Nunhead is the, uh, the second largest of the Magnificent Seven. And they say it's the least well known, I would say alongside West Norwood. But certainly the southern cemeteries are not as famous as those north of the river. Makes me think of the Will Self story, how the dead live, the way they were building these, these homes for the, for the bodies of the deceased, so that they might live on in some form. I feel like after when we went to Highgate and I tried to recite all seven and I couldn't remember one. Let's see if we can do it together, because I'm sure some of you are wondering, hang on, you keep saying the Magnificent Seven cemeteries, what are the other six? So we have Nunhead here, then we have uh, Kensal Green Cemetery, we have Brompton Cemetery, Tower Hamlet Cemetery, Abney Park Cemetery, Highgate Cemetery and West Norwood Cemetery. West Norwood was the one I couldn't remember before. And I've done videos on um, Highgate Cemetery, 
Uh, Abney Park Cemetery features in two videos. Uh, does West, Brom West Brompton's in my London Overground film with Ian Sinclair, but I should probably upload a video I shot with Ian, actually, uh, where we, it's just about uh, Brompton, along with the stuff with uh, Andrew Cotting dressed as a straw bear. <laughs> walking around West Brompton. So it'd be good to try and get around all of them. I'm just trying to think ones that don't feature in a video. Tower Hamlets features in a video, doesn't it? With Bob and Roberta Smith at Austerlitz. So West Norwood. Uh, Kensal Green hasn't featured in any of the videos, although it's in my um, project, my Kensal Rise project, which I'll link to below. But this is really magical. This is really magical here. Um, it's really got something about it. Nunhead doesn't have the famous names like Highgate does, or even the famous names of the past that Kensal Green has. The notables buried here were just wealthy people of their age, or perhaps authors that were well known of the, in their age, or political figures, but nobody that has really resonated through the ages. But that shouldn't make any difference to its value as a space. It's a peaceful, quiet place of reflection. This is quite a grandiose, Slab, isn't it? It's huge. Unfortunately, I can't really make out the whole story here. I think it's a family tomb, a number of people from the same family, possibly Nolith, maybe is the name. He was a lieutenant in the Royal Navy, seventh son of the above, John and Hannah Nolith. When you look at the Victorian view of death, you kind of need to put it in the context of the terrible uh, mortality rates in Victorian London. I think infant mortality was something like 50%. So 50% of children didn't uh, live beyond the age of five, which is incredibly sobering fact. I think the average life expectancy for a working class male was something in the, in the 20s, in the early 20s. For a middle class male, it was in the mid 40s. So death was ever, ever present. It was a real feature of their lives. The, uh, the literature for the cemetery says that this is the, I don't know, the most uh, spectacular or, or the most prominent tomb in the cemetery. It's a guy called John Allen, but not a lot is known about him. They don't really know who he was or how he managed to accrue <laughs> such wealth to afford such an amazing slab of marble here. This is a guy called Vincent Figgins, who says was a prominent type founder in the city of London. And I think another of his relatives here um, invented a process by which meat could be um, preserved in cans. So eventually, essentially uh, invented tinned meat. So this path here takes us to the highest point in the cemetery, the, the summit of Nunhead Hill, and should give us the view of St Paul's Cathedral. Got all these graves here in the trees, completely reclaimed by nature. And there is actually something fitting about that, this entanglement of the living and the dead. This is in a fairly astonishing tomb, isn't it? Looks like terracotta. A lot of them are built to kind of mimic temples in the, in the east that I guess people might have seen on the grand tours or that are seen in paintings that people had, had done from their grand tours. Again, linking Victorian society to the, to the civilizations of the ancient world. Martin was saying that in the 70s when people just used to climb over the walls, when this place was abandoned, that they would sleep in there and other such tombs like that. It's like a little house, isn't it? Unfortunately, the zoom on my camera isn't strong enough to pick out St Paul's, but I can just about make it out with the naked eye in that gap between the trees there. So you do have a view of St Paul's Cathedral. And beyond it, on that hill, that dark ridge, that must be Highgate, Highgate Cemetery. I suppose these great big granite and marble Tombstones only really represent the uh, burial places of the wealthy, but throughout the cemetery, there must be the remains of, uh, of less well-off Londoners, who I guess were perhaps just cremated and, uh, and buried in small plots. 
Tower Hamlet Cemetery has over 350,000 burials. It's really wonderful the way that these cemeteries have become nature reserves and places where people come for a Sunday afternoon stroll. They've become places of life more so than they were places of death. And here's the uh, quite majestic obelisk here is for the um, Scottish Martyrs Mon Memorial. And these were Scottish political martyrs who were transported to Australia in 1790 for their campaigning for political reform in Scotland. It really is a magical place, isn't it? You step through those Portland stone gates into another world. So if you want to know more about um, Nunhead Cemetery, I'll put a link below to the Friends of Nunhead Cemetery's website and they've got um, loads of information about it. They've got publications you can buy and they do guided walks around the cemetery. Check when they do them. They certainly do them on a Sunday. I don't know if they do them any other days of the week. So in the remainder of the light, it's four o'clock now. Sunset's in about half an hour. I just want to go down to Nunhead Green and see if we can find the old, um, the old Nun's Head Tavern, uh, which I think, I think that is on the site of the old um, Benedictine nunnery, where the Mother Superior is said to be <coughs> decapitated. But let's go and have a look at the scene, the centre of old Nun Head. And look, we have a stink pipe here. Always lovely to find a stink pipe in the street. So we'll go down the romantically named Nunhead Grove, which should take us to Nunhead Green. That's lovely. There's a little row of cottages just set back from the road here that kind of have that villagey feel from when this would have been a, a hamlet in the fields. The man of Kent pub here, reflecting uh, the proximity of Nunhead to the, to the Dover Road and you'd have had the drovers passing through this area. And this is Nunhead Green. It's a nice little spot, isn't it? And this is where, according to the legend, the, uh, the Mother Superior's head would have been placed upon a spike somewhere upon this green. Hopefully not where there's the children's playground today. And behind this scaffolding here is the old Nun's Head pub. And I think this pub here is said to be on the site of the nunnery that was here until the um, dissolution of the monasteries in the 16th century. And I believe that uh, tithes were paid to the Abbey of Bermondsey from the 12th century until the dissolution of the monasteries. A historic site. I don't think this pub here is the historic pub. The old Nun's Head Tavern was a 17th century inn that was a popular resort. They'd have dances here and, and all sorts of entertainments and people would come from far and wide to enjoy the dances and the entertainments and the fine views across London. Really, you've got to go a little bit further up the hill to get the fine views now, I think. It's fantastic this pub here is called the Pyrotechnicist's Arms. I think I pr pronounced that right, but... Um, it reflects the fact that there were firework factories in Nunhead that used to supply a Crystal Palace with its fireworks for its grand displays. So that has got to be one of the best pub names ever, I think. Well, thank you so much for joining me on that really lovely walk, enjoying the heights and the sights of Telegraph Hill and Nunhead and the majestic Nunhead Cemetery, which I'm going to controversially declare my favourite of the magnificent seven London cemeteries. I think that, I think I do think that. Or maybe it's just got into me recently because I've been down here a few times, but yeah, I think it's number one on my list, but I need to go to West Norwood. I know, tell me what your favourite magnificent seven London cemetery is. And also, if you'd like to see more of these um, cemetery magnificent seven uh, walks in the future, I think West Norwood's got to be done, hasn't it? So look, take care of yourselves. Have a great week 
and as I always like to say, I mean, I did think about changing my sign up at one point and there was a rebellion, wasn't there? So I look forward to seeing you on the next walk, wherever that may be. And again, I genuinely have no idea whatsoever. Take care.